This is a tough gig, six presenter and a morning of six. Uh, I will try to make this as painless as possible, no slides. So um, the other thing I just wanted to say is I really do appreciate more today than ever that I'm retired. That commute here this morning was just awful. So, uh, but uh, I'm glad to be here. I, what I'm trying to give you a little bit of presentation as, as Jeff gave you kind of my, a little bit of background, but just kind of walk you through some of my history to give you, to bring us up to date. You've heard a lot about the census and the way 2020 is going to be conducted. I came to the Census Bureau from Cincinnati back in 1975 to actually be what they called a geographic planning specialist when they moved geographic planning out into the regions for the first time, and we were running around updating maps, going to planning agencies. And at that time, maps were actually done in Jeffersonville, Indiana. They were done on mylar. People would rub those little block numbers on the maps, and then they would photograph them, and then they would distribute them in these big binders. Um, so I did that, moved into the administrative uh, operations for the 1980 census um, in Detroit, running 37 district offices in terms of administrative activities in Ohio and Michigan. And then after the census, became the head of information services, where I finally got to utilize the information that was being published by the census. All that data that were being collected, how were they being used? At that time, we were putting them in books. And I would load up my... Uh, my, the trunk of my car with all the census books and go out and do workshops. How do you start to find data in these books? Some of you may remember those days. It takes me way back to good times. Um, but it was that that really gave me that love of what the census really means and how you can actually... I remember talking to an NAACP group in Columbus, Ohio, and having them just the eyes light up and saying, so this is where the data that National is giving us. They're telling us what our allocation is and why, and now we can actually fight for ourselves. And it was that kind of empowerment, that democratization, giving people access to information that they could then use to challenge authority, to do their own kinds of planning. And so I um, was with the census up until 1990 and then started through the 1990 census and moved over to Wayne State University, which was part of a state data center program. The Census Bureau set up the State Data Center program throughout the United States as a way of kind of counteracting these large data companies like CACI and others that, that were created to run mainframe computer tapes and charge an ordered amount of money. And, and really, it was the private sector that had access to the data. The people on the street didn't have that access. And it was much more detailed than what you could get in the books. And so the State Data Center program was set up so that you'd have universities and others distributing data throughout the state, but also having access to these computer tapes and being able to give them at no and low cost to people. And so it was adding that kind of information. So we had something called MIMIC, the Michigan Metropolitan Information Center back there in the Center for Urban Studies. And I did that up until 2005. So I ran the 2000 census when I was in it, at MIMIC, and we did a lot of outreach and helped the Census Bureau um, conduct the 2000 census as much as possible. 2005, I went to United Way as research director and actually started to say, okay, this is again now applying the data. How do we use the data? How do we do it for our own internal purposes, but also to help grantees and other partners? Here are the data. How do we start to use it? How can you use it to, to write your proposals, et cetera? So it's always this kind of love of how do we use this information and how valuable it is. And then in 2008, um, the Skillman Foundation and Kresge Foundation, things were a little bit in flux in Detroit, obviously. Um, we were soon having three mayors in three years. Um, we now were in recession. The foreclosure crisis was really hitting. And foundations were going to start to invest in the city. They needed to know where they should be investing and how were they going to evaluate those investments. And so they came to me at United Way and said, We've got $1.8 million for a three-year program. Could you start something? And we created the, um, what we call Data Driven Detroit now, which is still alive and well, even though I've been gone for four years. Um, and it was really to give, again, information down to the lowest level of geography, down to the block level, and then aggregate it with other kind of information from other government agencies, from local um, local government, et cetera, et cetera, trying to build all that kind of information to make it available to the public. And also to 
to really to work with local governments to try to help in the 2010 census. As I said, we knew 2010 was going to be tough. 2008, Kwame Kilpatrick was mayor when I, when I got the, the gig with D3, as we call it. Um, he soon left and was replaced by Ken Cockrell, who was there for about a year and a half, and then he was replaced by Dave Bing in 2010. So he had this, you had the city in flux with the foreclosure crisis and all the other um, economic issues. You had three different mayors coming on. We told Detroit this was going to be the toughest census that they'd had in years. They had to get out. They had to do outreach. Fortunately, the Michigan Nonprofit Association and others were doing a nonprofit efforts to get out into the community. The city said, we don't have the resources. We're not going to do it. We can't do it. So Detroit, while you had the state doing various efforts, other communities doing efforts, Detroit kind of begged off. The result was the city of Detroit lost 238,000 people between 2000 and 2010. Did they really leave, lose 238? We'll never know. Um, it could be because of the undercount, because they did a lousy job getting the word out. Um, you know, the nonprofit community and others could only do so much, but you didn't have the city really pushing it. 25% um, of the population disappeared. And we've been living with that population now, dropping slowly. We're at about 672, according to the latest estimates. And Mike Duggan has said population growth will be the one measure of his success if we can turn around the population. Every year we think that it might be. I'm still waiting for 2018 estimates. I still think Detroit will do it. But um, the I think the importance of outreach, the importance of people getting out there and pushing the census is very critical. And so I, my main point is to, to mention an effort now undergoing, un, going on in the state um, that obviously we will have complete count committees coming at the community level. We will have a complete count commission, I'm sure, at the state level. But right now we have something called, and I want to get it right, the Census 2020 Michigan Nonprofits Count Campaign. And Joan Gustafson is here from the Michigan Nonprofit Association. You can ask her all the detailed questions. But it is a program to mobilize nonprofits throughout the state. There's a wonderful advisory committee of groups across the state. A lot of the various minority and, and uh, persons of color, the various groups across the state that are getting very activated. We realize that the Census Bureau telling people to fill out the census and that it's private and it's wonderful doesn't cut it. Even city government telling you, you know, trust you, trust us. We, this is very important. We need it because of funding, because of political representation. People kind of just go, yeah, that's great. We know what, we hope that voter turnout next Tuesday will show us something that we've never seen before, but we have to wait. But certainly census participation is not on everybody's uh, radar and is not, they're not very, and you just heard, a lot of people are afraid of the census and certainly more this time than before. But they do trust their nonprofits. They do trust the groups in the community, their, their neighbors, the groups that are providing programming for them, that are giving the kinds of aid that they, that they need. Um, they are trusted um, trusted participants in the community and people will listen to them. So there's a big effort. The Michigan Nonprofit Association has combined with a number of foundations. Kellogg is starting it off. Over 20 foundations have now put money into a campaign that's going to be up to $4.7 million. The state's put in a half a million dollars toward that. So it, we're really looking forward to a tremendous outreach that will kind of overcome maybe some of the other issues that we have to face going forward. So I just want to say that the campaign website is becountedmi2020.com. That'll be available to you, um, certainly in the notes and everything after the conference. So I just wanted to be really quick, but it's, it's just, the census is kind of why I got to be where I was, just starting out, leaving graduate school in the middle of a PhD, uh, dissertation to work for the Census Bureau and uh, have never looked back. So um, I look forward to any kinds of questions. I will stop right there. Thank you.